Welcome to Blackthorn Prods. My name is Liam Kalis, co-founder and lead game programmer of Blackthorn Prods. In the second video of the Learn C Sharp Fundamentals in One Hour series, I will guide you step by step to learning one of the most important subjects of programming, variables. Alright guys, so just before we start, we are going to be using the Unity game engine throughout this series. You can download it for free, I'm going to provide the link in the description box down below, so go and check out before you continue to watch this video. So the first thing I want to teach you are variables. So a variable is basically a box that can contain information, and that box has to have a name, which can be anything you want and a label indicating what type of information that box can store. So let's create our own variables. So we have got our box. Now we must choose our label. There are four label types that we can choose from in C Sharp. Int labels will let our box contain whole numbers. They can be positive or negative. Float labels enable our boxes to store decimal numbers. They can also be positive or negative. String labels give our boxes the ability to store text. And finally, we have the bool label, which lets our box contain true or false values. Now we can just give a name to each one of our boxes. And there we go, we have successfully created four different variables. We can also give our boxes default information. In the programming world, we call this information the variable's value. So for example, in our int variable, we can store the number negative four. In our float variable, we can store the number 8.5f. Don't forget to put the letter f at the end of your float numbers. For the string variable, we can put the text blackthorn prods. Remember to put your text in quotation marks. And finally, we can assign to our bool variable the value true. Okay, so now that we know what a variable is and how we can create one, let's see how all this applies to real c -sharp code. Okay, so I'm here inside of Unity and I've got a brand new project set up. So we're just going to go inside our assets pan, right click on it and go to create c -sharp script. And I'm going to rename my one to variables. Okay, then we're just going to double click on it and it will open it up in your default text editor, which in my case is model develop. All right, so once we have got our script open, we will be presented with this default code generated by Unity. So it might seem very daunting for you, but don't worry, we will cover what each line does in future episodes of this series. And I'm also going to explain to you what this part does right here in just a little bit. Okay, so now let's create our four variables using C Sharp. So come right under line 5 and the first thing we have to do is specify the type of our variable, in other words, the label of our box. So in this case, it would be int. Then just follow it with the name of our variable, so health, and then just put a semicolon. And just like that, we have successfully created our health variable of type int. So now if we want to give this variable a default value, we just have to go right after name, put a equal sign and then give it the default value, so in this case 5. Perfect, so we just created our health variable who's got the type int and the default value of 5. Okay, so now let's create the three remaining variables. So let's come right underneath our health variable. And so the next one has got the type of float, so let's just write float. The name of it is speed, and it has got a default value of 3.5f. Don't forget the f for float numbers, and end it off with a semicolon. Alright, so let's come underneath that one there, and let's create the next one. So the next one has got the type of string, the name of character name and the default value of blackthorn prod 
in quotation marks, remember, for strings and end it off with a semicolon. And to finish off, we have got our variable of type bool with the name is alive and the default value of true. Perfect, so just like that, we have created our four variables using C sharp. Okay, so now I want to take a little moment and explain to you what this part here does. So first thing is these two gray lines. So these gray lines are comments. So a comment is basically just a note that you can write anywhere in your script. They will not get processed by the compiler. So in other words, uh, these comments will not get read by Unity when the game is playing. So you can write your own comments just by putting two forward slashes and then writing anything you want. So for example, if I come right before my four variables, I can put my two forward slashes, then write my variables. And just like that, we've created our own comments. Okay, so next we've got this void star, then these two parentheses, and then these two curly braces. So this right here is a function. And we will have a whole video dedicated just on functions, but for now know that this start function gets called at the beginning of our game. So anything we put between this curly brace and this one here will run at the start of our game. Then we've got this update function. So this function here gets called once per frame and there are anything between 30 to 60 frames per second. So this function here gets called very often. Another thing I want to show you guys is the print function. So if you just write print followed with a pair of parentheses and end it up with a semicolon, then anything you put in between those two parentheses will get printed out in the Unity console. So for example, if I write the string hello world, well hello world will get printed out in the console. So this function is very very useful when you're just testing something out or even when you're debugging your code. Alright, so let's play around a little bit with the print function. So let's go inside of our start function and write print, then our two parentheses, and end it with our semicolon. And let's just start by printing out the string hello world. Okay, so then save your script. You can save it by pressing Command S or Control S on your keyboard. And if we head over back to Unity, we just have to uh, assign this variable's script uh, onto at least one of our game objects in our scene. So I'm just going to drag and drop my variable script onto my camera, for example. And now if I press play, we will see that the text hello world gets printed out in the console. Excellent. So we can print out any variable type. So we can print out integers, floats, strings, and bools. Uh, we could even print out variables themselves. So if I write print health, it will print out the value of health, which in this case is 5. So let's test it out, save, go back to Unity and press play. And we'll see that 5 gets printed out. Great. We could also do some simple math. So for example, I'd say print 5 plus 10, which would give 15. I could do subtractions, so 5 minus 10, which would give minus 5. Multiplications is the asterisk sign, so 5 times 10, 50. I could do divisions, so if I say 100 divided by 10, that would give 10. A little bit with our strings, so if I say, um, hello, my name is, then put a space. After my string, put a plus, and then say plus character, uh, character name. It will say, hello, my name is, plus the character name, which is Batman Prod. So if I go back to Unity and press play, quite enough, that's what we see. Hello, my name is Blackthorn Prod. Amazing. We can also use our print function in the update function. So let me just take it, copy it, and remove it from the start function and paste it back into our update function. And now if we press play, we'll see that the string hello my name is Batman Prod is getting called every single frame. See how many there are? 
Uh, if I press the collapse button right here, we can see a more concise view. I can see hello my name is Batman Prod is now getting called 220 times and so on. So that's just to demonstrate how the update function works and how it's getting called every single frame of the game. Great! So that's it. Now I hope you understand a little bit more about the print function and uh, how we could uh, use it in our scripts. You should note that variable's value, the information stored in our boxes, can change at any given moment. So say we have an int variable called health that, at the start of our game, contains the number 5. During play, the character may take damage, reducing the value of health. The box will then contain the number 4. In codes, we can easily edit the value of a variable just by writing the name of the variable, followed with an equal sign, and then the new value. Alright, so let me give you a quick example of how this would work. So first thing, I'm just going to comment out this print function so that we keep things clean. So just put my two forward slashes. And then let me go inside my start function and say health equals four. And then after, I'm going to come down and print out the value of health. So health starts at 5, then after when the game starts, we are setting health to 4, and then we are printing out health. So we should see 4 get printed out in the Unity console. So let's head back over to Unity, press play, and right enough, we see the value 4 getting printed out. Excellent. Alright guys, so that is it for this episode. If you have any questions, problems, or suggestions, feel free to state them in the comments block down below. The next video about functions will be coming out very soon, so stay tuned with Blackthorn Prods. Of course, don't forget to subscribe to our channel to see more great game development content, and leave your thumbs up down below if you learned something interesting in this video. Okay, cheers guys!